to worship at Hosanna Lutheran Church in Forest Lake. My name is Laura Anderson. Hear these words of promise from the prophet Isaiah. God, you are the one who saves us. We will trust in you and not be afraid. The Lord is my strength and my song. The Lord is my salvation. Let us sing. Though the tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. There's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I lift my eyes, I lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in my heart, I will praise you, Lord. a new summer series titled Dear John, exploring the three letters of John aptly named 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. In these letters, the writer, let's call him John, writes to the young church about the importance of linking faith with life. Jesus' followers are called to live a life grounded in the love of God, Around here at Hosanna, we say it like this, we are called, gathered, and sent to be a people living, loving, and serving so that all will know Jesus. Seems simple enough. Along with the exploring these letters on Sunday, we'll be taking a deeper look on Thursdays. I'm hosting a life group Bible study up in the gathering space here at Hosanna at 2 p.m. No experience is necessary and all are welcome. Invite a friend. 
Well, this morning, let's jump in. The opening or prologue to 1 John begins like this. The letter writer begins by clearly stating his purpose in writing. He says, we want to tell you about the word that gives life. We write these things to you so that you can be full of joy, joy with us. And so today, as we kick this off, it's all going to be about joy and rejoicing. So we're going to start with our kid talk. So kids, right where you are, if you want to stand up, we're going to first learn some sign language about joy. The first sign we're going to learn is happy. So go ahead and stand up, kids, right where you are. Help me out here. Stand up. Stand up. So the first sign language is joy. And joy is simply like this. Can you guys do this with one hand? Actually, this is happy with one hand. Happy. Now, if you want to be joyful, then you use two hands. Joy. You guys can all do that. And all you guys are kids. So you guys sitting in the chairs back there, you uh, young adults, you can do this too. And now if you really want to go wild and crazy, we're talking about rejoicing, rejoicing looks like this. So let's see you do that. I knew, I knew that you could do that. Now, what you need to know is that joy is not the same as happiness. Joy is grounded in Jesus and the love, we know the sign language for love, the love of God. And so one of the key concepts that John writes about is our need to be rooted in the goodness and the love of God. But the writer will remind us that we make mistakes. Kids out there, do you ever make mistakes? (laughs) Oh, I heard some say never. I heard some raising their hands like sometimes. I think we all make mistakes. Have you ever been like nasty to your brother or sister? No, I heard. Um, Have you ever told a lie, even if it was just a white lie? Yeah, there are all kinds of things that we do that are called sin, that keeps us away from being in full communion with God. But God tells us in 1 John, the letter writer tells us these words. He says, if we say we have no sin, we are fooling ourselves and the truth is not in us because we do have sin. We do do things that keep us from God. But then the letter writer tells us, but if we confess our sins, God will forgive us. And then he says, we can trust God to do this. We can trust God to do this because God is good. We all make mistakes, but the good news is that God loves us even when we make mistakes. So today for our confession, we're gonna use those words from 1 John. They're um, on your song sheets today. And then during the song of confession, what you guys are going to do is you guys are going to blow, you're going to think about something that you've done wrong. And for you ladies in the front row that said you do nothing wrong, talk to your parents, okay? Think about something that you perhaps have done wrong. And then what I want you to do is blow some bubbles. And that's for all of you kids because everybody should have bubbles. If you don't have bubbles, raise your hand. And during this song, we're all going to release through confession, our sins to God. And God is going to allow them to be just blown away and forgotten. They're going to be popped. They're going to be dismissed. And then following the song, you will receive the words of forgiveness that truly, truly set us free. So let's take out those song sheets. It begins like this. If we say we have no sin, we are fooling ourselves and the truth is not in us. And then you reply... But if we confess our sins, God will forgive us. We can trust God to do this. So as we sing this day, we can trust God to do this because God is good. We can trust God to do this because God's mercy never fails. Let us think about those things that separate us from God and blow them away. fills me all my days 
I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will see of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made whole, I will see of the goodness. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, today, a Max Lucado story to get us going. Chippy the parakeet never saw it coming. One second he was peacefully perched in his cage. The next he was sucked in, washed up, and blown over. You see, the problem began when Chippy's owner decided to clean Chippy's cage with, you got it, a vacuum cleaner. She removed the attachment from the vacuum cleaner and put the end of the hose in the cage. And as she did that, oh so carefully, the phone rang. And she took the call and before she knew it, Chippy <laughs> was sucked right into the vacuum. She dropped her phone, she opened the vacuum cleaner bag only to find Chippy 
still alive, but stunned. I can only imagine. Now, since the bird was covered with dust and soot, she grabbed him and she raced to the bathroom. She turned on the faucet and held Chippy under the running water. Then, realizing that Chippy was soaked and shivering, she did what any compassionate bird owner would do. She reached for the hair dryer and blasted the poor pet with hot air. Poor Chippy. You see, he never knew what hit him. Now, a few days later, after the trauma, the reporter who'd initially written about the event contacted Chippy's owner to see how the bird was recovering. Well, replied Chippy's owner, Chippy doesn't sing much anymore. He just sits and stares. Well, it's not hard to see why. Sucked in, washed up, blown over, that's enough to steal the song from the most courageous and strongest of heart. Wouldn't you agree? So today, as we enter this worship of joy, let's begin with some heavy honesty. Because you can feel it. The level of pain and sadness, even despair, frustration, defeat, and disappointment, it's overwhelming right now. You see... The world feels so very broken on so very many levels. As my grandma George was fond of saying when all the cousins gathered at the cabin, can't you all just try and get along? Joy seems hard to find. Joy. Or is it? Perhaps today you're feeling without your song, sucked in, washed up, and blown over. While we cannot and we should not be uninformed with what's happening outside ourselves, it is important that if and when it gets to be too much, if you should find yourself just sitting and staring, I'm going to give you permission today to take a break from the news, from your social media platforms, and get outside. Get outside and take a walk. Do what we're doing here today. Connect with your community. We need each other. Friends, today's topic is joy. Joy from the Greek word chara. Chara is also derived from charis, which is great Greek for grace. It's also at the root of gratitude or giving thanks. This is important to consider because it tells us, or better yet, it reminds us that chara, joy, is produced by charis, the grace of God. This means that joy, as understood in the Bible, is not a human-based happiness at all that comes and goes, but a divine gift. It is our DNA, the divine nature of the Almighty in us, as we are grafted to the true vine. It is the fruit of the Spirit, and we know them from last week, the fruit singular of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Being happy... It's not the same as joy because you see happiness is a passing emotion, something easily affected by circumstance. A satisfying meal can momentarily bring happiness. So can a thoughtful gift, an entertaining movie, or even a kind word. But joy, joy is different. Joy is independent of what is happening. It's a feeling of inner gladness. The Anchor Bible Dictionary suggests that joy is the result of conscious union with God. It's what we do when we practice worship. It's found in prayer and meditation, in the community of the faithful. It raises us above pain and sorrow and remorse. Author C.S. Lewis suggests that we are always surprised by joy. By joy. And theologian and author Henry Nouwen writes, Joy is essential to spiritual life. Jesus reveals to us God's love so that his joy may be ours and that our joy might be complete. And then he shares joy. Joy is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved. And you are. 
and that nothing, not sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away. And that, my friends, is joy. It's the key. We can be unhappy about many things, but joy can still be there because it comes from the knowledge that God loves us, loves you. We hear that John writes this letter so that we all might have joy. Throughout the Bible, we hear of joy and the command to be joyful. From the Psalms, Psalm 66, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Or Psalm 47, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to joy with loud cries of joy. The Apostle Paul writes about this joy in many of his letters to the churches. When Paul writes to the church in Philippi, he's actually in prison. He's awaiting trial, wondering if he will live or die. And in this relatively short letter, only four chapters, 104 verses, the word joy or rejoice occurs 16 times. Paul is not in a happy place, and yet he writes of joy, the joy of the Lord. From the end of the letter, Philippians for Paul commands us, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. This is a song that is often sung by our kids in faith formation. So I want you today to sing it with me if you know it. Do you know it? Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Try it. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice again. I say rejoice. I think you guys can do better than that. Let's try it one more time, okay? Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice again. I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice again. I say rejoice. We can also do that in a round, but we're not going to do that today. What's puzzling here is that little word, always, that you sang. It would be much more palatable and even understandable. I would completely get it if Paul would write something like, rejoice sometimes, or rejoice when things are going your way, or when you're having a good day. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice when you have won a great victory, landed the perfect job, or at the birth of a child. Rejoice. Or when you win the mega Powerball, rejoice. But then you'd have to play the Powerball, and that's for another sermon. My friends, how? How can you possibly rejoice when you have had bitter disappointment? Or when you've gotten the terrible news from the doctor? Or your fondest dreams? Or the dreams of someone you love have been shattered? Or you turn on the news and hear about another shooting, hatred, violence, unrest. Doesn't it almost seem callous, even cruel, if I were to burst into songs at that moment? Rejoice, rejoice, again I say. Rejoice? In the introduction to the book of joy, the author writes, is it really possible to be joyful even in the face of our daily troubles? From frustration with morning traffic to fears of not being able to provide for our families, from anger at those who have wronged us to grief at the loss of those we love, from the ravages of illness to the abyss of death? The author says, how do we embrace the reality of our lives? Deny nothing but transcend the pain and suffering that is inescapable. And then he says, and even when our lives are good, how do we live in joy when so many others are suffering? When crushing poverty robs people of their future, when violence and terror fill our streets, and when ecological devastation endangers the very possible possibility of life on our planet. This book, the author says, is an attempt to answer these questions and many more. The book, nonfiction, is actually a conversation between the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. 
And it's been made into a movie documentary titled Mission Joy, Finding Happiness and Joy in Troubled Times that will be released this summer. These heroes of faith explore the ways of cultivating joy as a way of being and not simply a feeling. I think part of our perplexity and puzzlement with the command to rejoice or be joyful comes from our misunderstanding of the word joy. You see, our culture sentimentalizes, even romanticizes joy and confuses it often with just happiness. The command to be joyful suggests not that we try and force ourselves to feel something that we don't, but joy is an act and it's an action. And when we act, like we're acting today in praise and worship, we are called and gathered when we practice, when we put our focus on Jesus, when we consider the awesome gifts in our lives, the blessings that God has given us, the love of God in Christ Jesus that we've been shown. My friends, as you blew those bubbles away, I saw the joy in your faces. And I saw the kids running around, both big kids and little kids. If you're with us online, were you smiling? Did it bring a smile to your face? Because you see joy, real joy is contagious. And joy, as people of the way, as followers of Jesus, joy is our offering. We tend to believe that we are passive and joy happens to us. But joy in the Hebrew understanding is something we do actively. We do this actively in response to God's love. Joy is so much more than a feeling. It's a commitment to praise and prayer to a power bigger and better than ourselves who has gifted us with something far greater than any turmoil or trouble that can happen in this world. Friends, joy is not the negation of sorrow, but the sure and certain knowledge that the Son, or better said, the Son, Jesus, is present. Even if presently, it might be under a cloud. Present through it all. Joy is an act of defiance, boldly proclaiming in the face of anything the world can throw at us, that God is more. Grieving and sorrow exist, and they are more than valid emotions. We've all traveled them. This has been a week of sorrow and heartache. We have heard about funeral after funeral of children, grade school children, more shootings. When will it stop? Again, from the book of Joy, the author writes, it was time to ask the question that people from around the world most wanted me to ask. A question not about joy, but about sorrow. And not about theirs, but about others. People all over the world wanted to know how they could possibly live with joy in a world so filled with sorrow and suffering. A woman named Dawn, who sent in a question, asked it this way. The world is in such turmoil. War, starvation, terrorism, pollution, genocide. My heart hurts for these issues. How do I find joy in the midst of such large world problems? The archbishop began, you show your humanity by how you see yourself, not as apart from others, but from your connection to others. He says, I have frequently wept about the things such as the ones you have mentioned. And then he continues, God created us. God created us and said, go now, my child, you have freedom. And God has such an incredible reverence for that freedom that God would much rather we went freely to hell than compel us to heaven. And then he said, yes, we are capable of the most awful atrocities and God weeps. God weeps until, until there are those who say, I do. I do want to try to do something. Despite the aberrations, the fundamental thing about humanity, about humankind, about people, he said, is that they are good. They are made good. And they really want to be good. We, you and I, have a fantastic capacity for goodness. What can you do to help change in that situation? You might not be able to do a great deal, 
but he suggests start where you are and do what you can where you are. And yes, he says, be appalled. It would be awful if we looked on all that horrendousness and said, eh, it doesn't really matter. It's so wonderful that we can be distressed. That is part of the greatness, he said, of who we are. That you are distressed about someone who is not family in any conventional way, and yet you feel distressed equally. It's incredible just how compassionate and generous people can be. When a disaster happens, we realize we are family. Friends, we are family. We are one. People on the way. So, family, how's it going today? Sucked in, washed up, blown over? That is enough to steal the song from the most courageous and strongest of heart. Wouldn't you agree? Have you ever felt like that? Friends, the next time that life sucks you into its vortex, hang on. Hang on and make the best of it. But unlike the experience of Chippy, don't ever let the song go out of your life. If you come to a place where you can't sing, then start humming. I wonder, do birds hum? Hummingbirds do. And then as you warm up your vocal cords, eventually your song, your hum will grow into a song. And that song will be a new song. Grab your voice and wrestle it into positive words, praise to God kind of words. Yeah, even when you don't understand, begin to speak faith, even when you don't feel faith or joy. Friends, there are a thousand things I don't understand in life, and I can't make them fit into a consistent way of looking at things. But there is one thing that I do know. I know God as revealed in his son, Jesus Christ. And I know that he loves me. And I know that he loves you. I don't know why some things happen, but I know God and he's going to make even the bad turn into good. My friends, we are the church together and we need each other. We are a community of practice. We practice keeping our eyes on Jesus. We practice following Jesus. We are people of the way on the way. We practice joy together. There is joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And so we lift our voices as we sing.
is well. It is well and it is right that we should come to the table on a day like this when the sun is shining. This is a table of joy, more than happiness, a table of joy. If you did not pick up your communion elements, just raise your hand. Someone from the hospitality team will be over to make sure that you have that, so get that ready. Here at the altar, here's the bread and here's the wine. And here is Jesus with an invitation Come and be fed at this table of love, a table where all are welcome. Holy communion is a sacrament of love. We combine these simply earthly elements of bread and wine with God's word, and they become holy, set apart. We remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. He said, do this and remember me. And so together as a community, we take and we eat. Again, after supper, he took his cup and gave thanks. He gave it to all, for all to drink. He said, in this cup is the new promise in my blood. It has been shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. And Jesus said, drink this, all of you, and remember. And so as a community, as people on the way, we drink. My friends, the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Our worship continues as we lift our prayers like rising bubbles. To God who is listening, let us pray. Living God, today we gather and we rejoice. We rejoice always amid the wars and the greed the violence, the abuses of all kinds in the world today. We desperately need the power of your spirit to hover in and through us, to ground us once again in your unstoppable joy. So this day, pour out your spirit, your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church that we may be for you a holy people, a people living, loving, and serving you out in the world, full of joy, Ground us in the gospel, secure our hope in Christ, strengthen our service to the outcast, and increase our love for one another and our neighbor. It is with joyful thanks we turn to you with our hopes, our dreams, our anxieties, our hurts, with our wondering and our worrying, knowing, confident that you hear us, that you care about us, and that you are able to make all things new. So this day, Lord, hear our prayers for the sick and for the injured, for those recovering from surgery and those anticipating surgery. We ask you to heal them physically, encourage them emotionally, and strengthen them spiritually. Hear our prayers, Lord, for all those who grieve. Embrace them in love and in joy. Enable them to have peace and to know the hope and joy your life, death, and resurrection bring. Hear our prayers, Lord, for a world riddled with violence and war, disease and poverty, injustice, despair. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come in power to liberate captives. Come with righteousness to free the oppressed. Come with truth to put an end to lies. Come with the light of the gospel into the dark corners of our world to give hope to the hopeless and new life to all. And Lord, let us be instruments of your will. Today we pray for our president, for all world leaders, guide them in their governing and give them wisdom beyond their own. This day hear our collective words as a prayer of gratitude, a prayer of conviction and a measure of hope and joy for your son taught us how to pray and it is him who we follow today. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining us today for this essential practice of worship. If you have been inspired by this practice, if you want to be part of our mission to live, love, and serve, we would welcome a donation. There are donation boxes back at all the hospitality tables. Along with online, there is a giving tab at hosannaforestlake.net. That giving tab is a great way to give. Next week is the second Sunday of June, so that means ice cream Sundays with all the yummy toppings will be available. And then the Saturday after the second Sunday, which would be June 18th, Miss Sarah is going to be taking kids to the park. Kids and family are going to be meeting at a park here in Forest Lake to do parks and parables. So make sure you find out more about that at hosannaforestlake.net. And then on Sunday, June 19th, which is also Father's Day, we're going to be having root beer floats here plus up in the upper parking lot, a cool car show. And you don't even have to be a dad to bring your cool car. In fact, I'm bringing my cool car, and she's actually up there right now, and her name is Ruby. So if you have a cool car or a wannabe cool car, or you just want to come and see the cars or the trucks or the motorcycles that might be here, please make sure you make a plan to join us. Well, there's lots of celebrating, and there's lots of joy. And speak about, speaking about celebration and joy, I see some folks coming out the doors here. Come on out, Janet Miller and friends. Here they come. They've got the beach balls to go along with the bubbles. Balls. Kick Woo! those out. All and right. we got the beach balls. All right. Well, Miss Janet <gasps> has some amazing news to share with us here at Hosanna Lutheran Church about our partnership with the Hosanna Discovery Center. Whoa. Yeah. We're coming. Come on, They're come coming. on out. <gasps> roll her on out. There we, have we got go. got some great Woo. news. Can we have a drum roll, please? We are now. <laughs> so, we, three years ago, we came, I stood what? What? here at three it was years. just It was just three years three ago. Three years ago. And I said. You said. If you are willing to partner oh. with us, we will try to bring you the best early childhood program where we can help infants through five-year-olds every day blossom and grow in God's love. And you said yes. Yes, Come Lord, on, yes, come Lord, on in. Yes. So I hired an amazing team of teachers that you see before you right here, all of our lead teachers. Woo, woo, uh, yes. woo, let's rejoice over that one. Under woo, the direction woo. of Samantha Wibstad. Here woo, she woo. is, your director. We're so glad yeah, to have you here. Samantha. Yes, and Samantha. And then, Tell us who your team is here. We have our amazing Miss Sarah. She's our discovery lead teacher. So she teaches Yay! our three and four year olds. Miss Stephanie, she teaches our older toddlers. And then we have Miss uh, Chris. Yes. <laughs> Miss Chris, our young toddler teacher, which is absolutely amazing. We added our young toddler classroom this year and she's been doing a wonderful job with that. Yay. Let's hear it for these great Woo! teachers every day. So. I want to just tell you a, just a little bit about what this means, like to be the best in the nation. So these teachers, we plan and prepare for this. Like we can't even apply to be a nationally accredited program until we're in an operation for a year. Then oh, but it wait takes, a minute. What? COVID happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. We still did it. We still did it. We still did it. We stayed open. We were COVID. one of four regional schools that said we need to be open for our first responders. Woo! We needed to do that as scared as we were because none of us knew what we were taking on. These teachers said we need to do this and we will pray every day that we'll get through it, and we did. And not only that, but... We did this. So, to be a NACI, a NACI accredited, so that's the National Association for the Early Childhood, you have to 
apply, take a year to fulfill criteria. In each classroom, they are graded points 400 criteria per classroom. Then when you're all done with that and you think you got it ready to go, they send out an evaluator from Washington, D.C. that comes and spends a couple days with you to make sure all those 400 criteria that you met in each classroom is actually valid. So then they watch, and I always just tell them, pretend they're not there, because it's kind of scary. It's a little bit intimidating, and they sit there with their... So, after all that, we wait and wait, and then we get word. We did it. Ta-da! Ta-da! Then, to be NACI accredited is such a high honor, the state of Minnesota says you can just fast track the four-star parent-aware rating, which is the highest quality rating in the state of Minnesota. There is no better. You can be no better early childhood program than a four-star parent-aware and an AC accredited. So, we did it. Oh, Good job. And today, we want to celebrate. We want to rejoice. And we have great joy that we are able to give this to the young families of the Forest Lake area. Yes, and they're but, here. But, we but, have but, a but, there's but, some of them here. But Janet, to say. I heard that there's even more breaking news. What? I know. What is the breaking news? More infants. Oh, you want me to tell them about that? Go ahead and tell them about okay. that. All right. So when we did our market research, because that's what you do when you come into an area, we knew that there was a lot of need for infant and toddler programming. So we said, okay, let's, let's go for it. We said, let's take it slow. We're just going to go for eight infants. Let's get our feet wet. Let's figure it out. Let's see how it works in the building, all that. We quickly filled and said, okay, let's go back and relicense and let's go to 12 infants. So right now we're at 12 infants. But there's a little bit of a problem. We have more infants that want to get in, and we can't push the other ones up till 16 months. Well, that's really a problem because now we have to say no to a lot of people they can't get in. So I called the state and I said, Would would you ever consider letting us change the rules a little bit here and get a variance and move children up at 12 months and make a room 12 months to 24 months and then 24 to 36. And they said, well, we've never done that before. We've never allowed that before. That'll have to go to the head of DHS licensing for the state. I said, oh boy, okay. I'm just trying to serve the families. In the state right now, just to give you a little fun fact, they are 100,000 spots short of in early childhood programs to care for the children in this state that need care. 100,000. I said, I'd like to bring that down some more if you would just let me do this. We waited and waited and waited and guess what? It passed and they're gonna use Hosanna as a template to try it, to try it. If, we, if it works, it will become something that they do across the state. So they're gonna grant us a variance. We're working on that right now. So we have a lot to celebrate today, a lot of great things. And from the bottom of my heart, I just wanna say thank you. You have been an amazing, amazing group of people that to work with, and it just makes my joy so much easier. I want to thank these teachers. They do an amazing job day in and day out, touching the lives of these amazing children that we get to serve. So, so I would like to invite Miss Samantha forward. She doesn't know this, and no, she hates it when we now. do this. So Miss Samantha has been with us since the beginning. very beginning of time. Well, not the beginning of time, but since the very beginning, <laughs> and took us through this all accreditation and NACI and Parent Aware and it's helped big. us build the 
the playground, playground. and yes. she works very closely with Rick. Where's Mr. Rick? M Where's Mr. Rick should Mr. probably also get um, an award. I know he's here somewhere. Where is Mr. Um, he's Rick? He's back over in the corner like oh, he always there is. Oh, there he is. He doesn't want to be in the limelight, he's, Mr. He's our Rick. Guy thank when, you. He's our guy when thank we you. Help, you're but amazing. Miss Sarah, this is a little gift for you along mm. with You Are Our Sunshine. And Yay. I know that there are times that we are running on fumes here, but um, <laughs> thank you for everything that you do to live, love, and serve so that all will know Jesus. Yeah. Yay! Oh! Well, my friends, yes. I'm going to... Do we have any other breaking news, or is that plenty? Well, I think it's plenty, but we have that beautiful playground that this whole congregation and oh my goodness we all what a team effort what, what a, a team effort and and immediately following worship we're heading up to the said beautiful playground beautiful. and we're going to have a picnic we've got hot dogs and chips yeah. and and carrots and apples and and water and crafts and games and all kinds of fun stuff to do up in the playground so, so make sure come. that you head up there immediately following worship. And if you want to try any of these cool bubble things, I'll have them up there too because oh. they are just really actually pretty cool. <laughs> I'm going to invite you to please stand. Our final song is Leaning on the Ever... Uh, leaning on the everlasting arms and that is where we find our strength that is where we look to find the true joy and rejoicing in our life so now receive this benediction may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you may you look upon the lord the favor and grant him peace in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit and all god's people said amen, amen. let us sing
Thanks be to God, and we'll see you right up at the Hosanna Playground for a picnic and more amazing bubbles. See you soon.